Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, here. It is Thursday around 1 o'clock. I uh, just wanted to kind of put something out <clears throat> to, you know, let everyone be aware of what's been going on over the last few weeks and kind of put everything together for those of you who haven't been able to do so yourselves yet. Um, in relation to the bombings over this past weekend in Seaside Park, uh, Elizabeth and in Chelsea, New York, um, as well as the unrest and state of emergency down in North Carolina. Um, you know, <clears throat> things are coming to a head. The uh, citizens of this nation are about have had enough, and uh, we're, s we're going to see more domestic, foreign, and um, international issues before things get any better. So this is pretty much just a, a breakdown of why I think certain things may be happening and um, possibly what we can do to help ourselves and to prevent any um, unnecessary <clears throat> injuries or death or violence or anything like that. So first off, again with bombings in, um, in the Northeast this weekend, you know that ISIS has taken responsibility for that. Um, in North Carolina, you know, it was a police officer using uh, violence and a shoot to kill against an unarmed man who, as far as I could tell, was holding a book and they made him get out of his car while his window was up and shot him point blank. Which, in my opinion, you know, it's not the worst reason to have a protest, but having a protest turn into a violent riot, I mean, that's, you know, nobody needs to be doing that. And um, I would like to say that we can fix this without having a huge uproar, but, you know, that may, that may be necessary in the future. Who knows? Um, as far as what's going on overseas right now, and this is really the main reason why I decided to put this out, because I, mean, I don't think there's much more time we can be waiting. Um, over the weekend, there was a United Nations uh, bombing attack in in Syria against the rebels that quote unquote accidentally hit a hospital and killed 67 Syrian soldiers. Um, <clears throat> after the rebel was gone through the in the hospital uh, there were shells found from explosives that were made in the United States which you know goes along with the whole idea that you know maybe that there is a shadow government that's um, you know placing starting different oppositions in different parts of the world in order to create a destabilization so that they can move in and they can, you know, um, move forward with their plan of globalization. So over this weekend, you know, that was found and as most people are aware, Russia and the United States have been going through quite a few uh, difficulties in the last couple of months. So <clears throat> Monday morning, there was a UN aid convoy traveling through Syria, which was bombed. The United Nations and the United States immediately blamed Russia and the Syrian government for it. Well, from what I've uh, researched and heard, is that Russia is declining any involvement in this bombing, and they actually have proof, supposedly, that there was a United States military drone in the area of the time of the UN bombing, um, which kind of just adds to the fact that a U.S. explosive accidentally hit a Syrian hospital. Uh, in lieu of these events, or in light of these events, as well as what's going on on our shores, I think it's just best that people are aware of what's going on so that they can kind of be prepared themselves. Um, you know, to make any necessary adjustments or um, make sure that they can have a heads up if things do start going south um, all over the country. As most of you know, you know, I, I do believe that there is a, uh, a small group of people that are trying to control most of the population in order to create this new world order, one more government and uh, globalization. And I think that all of these events or majority of these events are all part of their plan to uh, 
again, destabilize everything and make it easier for them to come in, uh, militarize the government and create mass slavery and, uh, you know, remove all our rights. So a few basic things I would say, uh, as far as if anything happens here, you know, not to scare anybody, but I would say that you should at least have a three day supply of water. I would say at least three to four gallons of water per person uh, per day as well as non-perishable items like canned food, uh, dried food, cereals, things like that that won't go bad for a long time. Um, a can opener and basic utility, um, basic utensils as well as paper plates, paper cups, toilet paper, things like that. You know, basic necessities. Um, you also are going to want to have fire starters. Uh, fire starters, uh, matches, and or lighters, a little bit of dried kindling if you can possibly manage to get it. Um, and ideally this type of situation is for anything less than 72 hours, but anything over that is going to be a different story. People are going to have to start really um, coming together as a community and setting things up that are more long term if that becomes the case. For now, I think thing, you know, those are basics, uh, a little bit you should have extra clothing. It is becoming autumn and it is going to be getting cooler out. Uh, you should have blankets in case the electricity or gas goes out and you can't use your heat in your home. Uh, like I said, you should have something that would be able to start and keep a fire going in case there is no gas or electricity available. In the event of, say, an EMP, an explosion, gas lines are cut, water supplies are, are contaminated, any of the above could happen. And, um, you know, on top of that, slight to become slightly defensive, I would say if you have access to a firearm, make sure that you have ammunition for it. Make sure it's in an easy to reach place. Uh, if you don't have access to a firearm, at least get yourself something that you can protect yourself with, either a, a large knife or even, you know, like a couple of large sticks or make sure your doors are bolted shut. Uh, <clears throat> And again, you know, this stuff probably won't happen, but if it does, it's better to be prepared than to be caught with your pants down. Um, and again, this is all in light of the recent amount of events that have happened so quickly on our soil over the last couple of weeks. You know, whatever. So, there are also uh, other things that you should do. Try to make sure you're in a higher elevation. Um, the more you have access to being able to see around you, the better. Uh, make sure you communicate with other neighbors and other people in your area, you know, to make sure that they're all aware of what's going on. Um, there's a good chance that there won't be any cell phone reception if something does happen because I think the easiest thing to do would be an electromagnetic pulse that would cut out all, all electrical devices. And then we're pretty much stuck back in the uh, 50s as far as communication goes. So, these are just the basic few things that I was thinking about and I wanted to make mention to everybody about it. Uh, I don't know if anyone's going to actually watch this video. If you like it, you know, share it to your friends. Um, again, this is not something to try to scare everybody, but it's something that I've been doing a lot of research on and I think that if, you know, you're not made aware of it now, then it's going to be too late. I think the election is going to be the turning point in all of this, um, and I think that, again, it's better to be more prepared than to call it with your pants down. So if you have any questions, feel free to message me, email me, comment on this video. Um, if you like it, please share it with your family and friends, and uh, I look forward to talking to everyone soon. Thanks.